Good morning, it's 6.48 a.m. Monday, December 31st, 2018, Eastern Standard Time. Follow up to my video. Um, if you'll notice, the 2500 is still here at $30.52 on the sell side. And on the buy side, it's at $29.92. Uh, the result to my previous video of the work that they do to bring the price down. You can see all those heavy trades. There were 4,000 and 3,000. It was like 7,000 in trades plus others. You had like 10,000 in sales below this 2,500. And you'll notice, do you see 10,000 coin being bought since five hours ago? Um, I see coin being dumped, but like I said, that was the whole object of the game. They stacked the deck on the sell side to bring the price down. I told you at one o'clock, and now the price has been brought down. This is how they operate. This book is heavily manipulated, and the more I look at it, I'm, I see the habits, and I see how they're manipulating the market. I see how they do it through the order book. Now, it looks like the whole goal of this was to drop at 5%, which it has reached, which was done twice so far. It was done at 6 p.m. on December 30th, and again, 12 hours later, they're on a 12-hour cycle. Uh, mission accomplished. The mission in this case was to stop that rally that was happening. Now, if I was the person that was trying to bring the rally on the other side, now would be a perfect time to roll in and slam the price up. To get it over thirty dollars. Um. I like to talk to people about how are we going to fix our current situation. Well, a lot of people call proof of keys on January 3rd. I like to talk about that. I wouldn't really call it proof of keys. What I would call it is proof of assets. I have requested uh, from Coinbase several times in the past. I'd like to see that the coin that you claim that you're selling, I want to see the wallet where you keep it because I don't believe you, you do volumes. I, I, I think what you're doing is uh, trading in between accounts. Let me see your uh, cold wallet you do, you know, that the exchange handles. I want to see as a, as a request. I want to see proof of assets. That's what it's called in the, in the regular market. So proof of keys is equivalent to proof of assets. Here I am trading and I'm getting on delivery. So I want to see your, where you, with the wallet where you hold these coins that I'm, I'm buying on Coinbase. I want to see that you actually have them before I go in and per try to attempt to purchase them. Why? Because I'm preventing myself from being ripped off and incurring risk. Now, what happens if you buy something, for example, uh, you buy something, uh, Litecoin. Say Litecoin, for instance, is thirty dollars. You buy it today. Now these idiots, uh, oh well, we can't deliver for the next for a week. On average, about a week. You say a week. What happens in four days if Litecoin decides to go up a thousand percent in those days? I mean, I mean you know, what, what if even if it goes a hundred percent, then it goes back down and crashes within that day. Now, what happens to you? Do you get to sell those assets, even though you know they're not delivered? What if you do an arbitration and it goes up uh, uh, on another exchange? It goes up uh, for some fluke reason. It goes up to 
a hundred percent. You don't have delivery, you can't move those coins to that other exchange and sell them and make that money through arbitration. If you get a lucky day, and that happens, and you don't have your coin, what does Coinbase do for you on that? The the problem with this is that. This is supposed to be instant. It's advertised. You pay with your debit card. You get. You instantly receive the coin to do as you wish. Now I haven't had a prop. I had a problem once, but I now I'm only buying small amounts because, to honestly, to tell you, I, I don't trust the exchange. And I pulled off all my stuff off the exchange. And the problem why everybody else is also telling you to prove your asset, you know, prove that you hold those assets and move them off the exchange. And the actual proof, yeah, you, you got them, they're in your account. No, no, no. If you go to the bank and you can't withdraw your money, that's no longer your money. You see, Coinbase is basically acting as the bank, the third party concerned. Now, what if you, if, if you have a bill, somebody wants to take Litecoin as a payment? Like, say, in big swear pace, and the person goes, well, you know, pay me my Litecoin. Here you go, okay, bought the Litecoin, I'm going to transfer you. And then, wah, wah, wah. So there you are now. You have an outstanding bill. You cannot be paid because you bought the coin. You can't get your money back. And they're telling you, well, in three days, four days, or whatever, you, you'll, you'll complete your transfer. Oh, no. Litecoin and Bitcoin are designed to be an instant payment program, a peer-to-peer -peer network. And it sounds to me like Coinbase can't make its obligation and they're using excuses. Why? It's only 10 Litecoin. They're acting like he's moving like $10,000. 10 Litecoin is only worth about, what, $303.45 now. It's not, it's not even over $1,000. Why are they concerned about, you, you would think that he was moving a million dollars or over $10,000 that they have to go in and check. There's something wrong with this transaction. We'll have to investigate this heavy $300 buy, purchase of Litecoin? Nah, I don't believe it. I'm starting to think what's, what's happening here is, uh, it's, 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 I'll explain it to you. If these guys are doing a, a rehypothecation, now, the banking system does one for seven. Every dollar that they have on deposit, they lend out seven. This is how they create money out of thin air. The rehypothecation on this, they claim it's unregulated. Might be 40, 50 times. We don't know. So that's what we're trying to figure out. It, it, in other words, if, if you're investing into a, an exchange, you're putting your money in the exchange, you're investing on that uh, exchange based on the risk also. Okay? It might be, you might uh, not know all the underlying risk, which hence you might invest a lot less more. So they keep it hushed. So if you don't know if they're taking in 10 coin and then rehypothecating that as 100, you don't know. It, it might be possible. That's why you might see, that's why you're seeing these uh, wild volumes where you see all the Litecoin issued being traded every four days. And meanwhile, there's King Whale, who holds 60% of the coin in four wallets, who's not selling, you got to scratch your head. Well, if this guy holds half the coin and he hasn't moved anything except between wallets, how are you accomplishing this miraculous feat of selling all the coin in existence every three to four days? There's something wrong. You, it's impossible to sell all the coin in three to four days. If one person, King Whale, I call him, holds 60% of the coin, Litecoin, and is not selling it. That's why people are asking for proof of assets. Because we don't believe you have these coins physically in the account. And 
we're seeing red flags of failure to deliver. Now, in a, in a, in a common uh, market, when this failed, I, I've, I've seen failures to deliver where the, the, the floor broker couldn't get the shares. And we called the clearinghouse, beg, borrow, or steal them, but we want those shares. You took the money. We, we want those shares. And they would go borrow them if they had them. Now, I'm wondering if these exchanges are rehypothecating and lending each other at interest these coins. Which might, might be also another underlying factor where you have Coinbase Pro who has uh, uh, people who have lots of coin on him. Or, or Coinbase proper is lending these coins to Coinbase Pro or another exchange. <laughs> you, know, you know, people aren't looking at that, and I know, and I know that these uh, banks and brokers actually have a thing called stock loan, where they'll lend each other assets at an interest rate. Uh, I actually used to be the person that negotiated that interest rate between the brokers. The brokers would confirm an interest rate. And what would happen is a lot of the times that somehow during the daily hectic shuffle of, uh, you know, high frequency trading, some of those rates used to get screwed up. And my job at Chase as consultant was to negotiate those rates into something viable. And I had such a good relation with my counterparts and other companies. Uh, I developed such a good relationship that they would say, oh, John, uh, even though your, your, your rate is higher, you know what? Your rate is lower than, than ours. So you know what? We're going to give you the money anyway, John. We trust you. We like you. We do a lot of business with you. You help us a lot when there's a problem. You get in there and you fix it right away. So you know what? Here's the extra money. Don't don't worry about it. Take it from us. All right? And my first six months there at Chase, I made them an extra million dollars in broker fee income because of the way I conducted myself. I took a job that most people didn't last six months in, and I was there for a couple of years. I had such a good relationship. I made the job easier. We were able to track everything in stock loan. Now, I believe that these guys, when they rehypothecate, they're not only selling what they rehypothecate. I think they're loaning it to other um, exchanges that have less volume than they do. And as I understand it from... Uh, Watch a J snippet. You can open up a, um, an exchange, have everything routed to another exchange, a larger exchange, for your buys and sells. Mark it up a little bit, and there's software out there to do it. And you could show the volume on your exchange. It will be included in the, cap, you know, the market cap. And meanwhile, all she's doing is report a piece of the volume that's already been reported by the larger exchange. <laughs> but I do believe that some of these big holders of the coin might be lending this coin out for it to be traded every three days, and that might be included in that volume. It's being loaned out at interest, like stock loan. What you're doing, you see, what you're doing stock loan, let me explain something. In stock loan, you borrow the stock at a certain interest rate, right? And you sell it and you short it. So I'm starting to think that these guys are doing some kind of crypto loan trades behind closed doors. Where they have a basket of coin, they have you know basket trade. It's called some Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, and all of these other new coins that they're putting on here at Coinbase. You see Bitcoin Cash, and they offer them in the basket trade. Soon as the person who borrows these cryptos, what do they do? They dump it on the market. 
This is why we're in short mania. Then, as the price gets suppressed, they buy it back. Right at a lower price. Give the coin back to Coinbase, and they keep the difference. I think this is what's going on, too. They're going full bore. re everything. And then I think if they're rehypothecating these coins, they're putting those some of those rehypothecated coins in a basket. And to tell you the truth, we have such a limited issue on these coins, and it actually gets harder and harder to get every time the difficulty increases. There's no, there's no way possible that these guys can have this, the amount of coin they claim they do. Especially if you're lending them out and they're dumping them immediately on the market, they're shorting them. If you're lending them out, people are borrowing the coins on margin trading. So you not only, not only do you have coins being bought and sold and they can't be delivered, but you also have margin trading that's going on here where they're putting up one Bitcoin and they're borrowing seven more. So it's a one to eight match. Now, I don't know. Some of these exchanges might be lending out, repothecating it more. You hold one coin, we're going to give you 10, 20, 30. Who knows what the leverage is? So this is why the margin trading is the one bringing the price down. Because these guys are lending out more coin than they possibly can have. There's no way that Litecoin, when one person holds, King Whale holds 60% of the coin, he has it in four wallets, he moved it from a regular wallet to a Lightning Network wallet. And you're telling me that you can trade the whole volume of Litecoin in existence every three to four days. Which means that they're lending out this coin to margin trading, and these people are dumping it on the market, that's where you see this. And then when the regular buyer comes in to go buy something, they don't have anything because they lent it out to the margin trader. And you get an IOU. So the rehab application is absolutely true because it has to do with margin trading. If you're following my lead here, if you deposit one coin, I'll lend you seven more. You dump those on the market. Joe Schmo comes in. Hey, let me buy a 10 Litecoin. $300. Oh my God, we, we, we've done so much margin trading contracts and, and lent out all of this coin, you know, to the reapplication one for seven. We don't have any coin for the buyer. So there you go. There you go. It's that simple to explain. Uh, that's why you guys call it proof of keys. Now, I'm calling it proof of assets. I have, I have asked Coinbase for proof of assets. Let me let me get the address to your cold wallet. I want to see you holding coin here that you're actually selling. I got no reply. And now proof of assets is a simple thing that any client should be able to ask for any brokerage house, exchange, or clearing house. No, you're selling this? Well, let me see. You're selling this, I want to see proof that you actually have this issue. Which, what, what clearinghouse are you using? You got an account at the clearinghouse? Let me call the clearinghouse and find out if you actually hold these assets you're selling me. Okay? I, I, want, to, I want to see the trade on the DOT system. I want to see the JIT ticket with the tags on it. That's, that's what I used to do too. When you do a trade to a system, you get a JIT ticket, right? From the, from the brokerage house, a JIT ticket. That's done on the, the designated order transfer on the DOT system. I actually used to put the orders in the DOT system. I used the DOT system for years. I learned, I learned the DOT system from Cowan upside down. That was my job. Now, if I want to see my trade went through, I used to go on the DOT system and see, and it would print it up for me. Here's your trade. Here's your shares. The, the clearinghouse would tell me which clearinghouse it came, what price they paid, and how much. And it would attack attach that receipt to the JIT ticket. That was my confirmation. We actually had actual receipts of what we bought or sold on the DOT system. Sometimes we would go to the trading floor 
if we needed it really fast, we didn't want to wait for the clearinghouse. But most of the bulk of our trades came through the DOT system. Designated order transfer. And the DOT system would give us an instant receipt. Now, if we if those uh if, if those trades did not come into the, you know, did, did not come into the accounts, we had to receive the proof that we had a proof of assets. Those, we own those assets. Where are they? They had to deliver them. They had to go get them, even if they had to borrow them. That's the, 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 the burden, again, the burden's on them. I, you sold me something. I better have delivery of it. Failure to deliver really happened on the DOT system. We really had uh, no problem with the, the DOT system. But now you're telling me over here, which this is comparable to this clearing system. This is designated order transfer system over here. And it's failing to deliver. It's some, that means they don't have the coin. If, if you do a comparison, anybody who's worked on the DOT system understands this. Anybody out there that could confirm this, uh, I think my friend Rachel Cohen will confirm this because she used to work on the DOT system. I'll get in contact with her. That's that's how we used to find if, our, if the orders were completed. That's how we used to do stock loan too. The transfers were made. Let me see. We, we would look it up on the QSIP and actually look up the trade to see if the trade was done. That's part of, you know, the, the, that was proof of assets right there. That's what we used to do. I used to do it at Chase Bank as a consultant. So now we now we have these guys that they're rehypothecating something on the limited issue. And the market was booming. It's still booming compared to last year. We're, we're, we're still over last year's price in Bitcoin by a large margin. So this this coin ain't go. If you compared yourself to last year, if you bought something compared you now, you're still in the profit margin. This is this is this is really bad. So I suspect that that, that the margin trading, which causes these dumps, this bear market, this excessive bear market, is where they're telling you deposit one coin, we'll lend you seven. Then you immediately come out and dump it on the market. Okay. Now the margin trading is, is causing all this huge bear market. Now you dumped it on the market. Now these guys have to come back and buy it back and give it back to, to the to the exchange that they borrowed it from at a lower price. And I'm starting to wonder how it's possible that these exchanges have all this coin to, 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 to cover all these margin bets. It's, 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 impo it's impossible. You, you're talking, there's two, now there's two forms of demand. There's the margin trader who's demanding every coin he deposits, he wants seven back, he wants to borrow seven. For every one that he deposits, that's number one. So right away, any asset that the margin trade deposits is absolutely being rehypothecated. There's no doubt in my mind it has to be rehypothecated for margin trading. If you have to deposit one coin to get to borrow seven, that's that's rehypothecation right there, one for seven. That's the same thing the bank does. You deposit a dollar, they lend out seven. You deposit one bitcoin, they lend out that lend out seven. That's rehypothecation right there. There's no doubt that, that rehypothecation is not happening. It is happening. It's absolutely 100% correct when Bitswear says that. So now you have all of this coin that they're lending out for the margin traders who are betting to go on short. So now, now we understand that. Now that's clear. So now we know what coins are being rehypothecated. Now, if you put your coins on this exchange, or you buy coins on this exchange, failure to deliver the coin is because these coins that they have on their books have been rehypothecated. They've been lent out. 
So now they have a, a problem. We got buying demand, and we got people who want to borrow the coin from us. How, how is it possible they can meet that demand? How? It's impossible. And and the coin was set up so it it a limited quantity that it can't work. If the market is expanding, which which it is, that you know they don't want to tell you if they tell you this, but there's no way that you can meet the demand of coins from the margin traders and the buyers. Of it. There's no way. It's impossible. And that rehypothecation, if you look into it, when it involves the margin trading where you deposit one coin and they lend you seven, which is rehypothecation, the bank, you deposit one dollar, they lend out seven. They may not to lend it to you, but they're lending it out that way. These guys are depositing a, Bit a Bitcoin to borrow seven, then they dump it on the market, then they have to go and buy it back. Then you got holders. And with just cases like going, one guy holds 60% and he's not selling, King Whale. And then you, you're looking at the activity, the margin trading, and you're looking at the, the massive amount of shorts they're selling. It, it'd be wise to ask for proof of assets, which in this case to us is proof of keys, which which it is. We want to see what, you, what you're holding. Because we don't believe it, it, it actually uh, is in the best interest of your clients or holding their coin on Coinbase that you, they actually have physical ownership of those coins. It's just a legend uh, on Coinbase, which is not that Coinbase. When you see your account, that's not the blockchain. It's it. Okay, they have a, a a pending status or a transaction status that'll show you your transactions on the blockchain. But that one or two Bitcoin or whatever you got there, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, doesn't mean you actually hold those assets. Unless you have a wallet address and you can put it in and check. They Those coins might be, you know, go to a, a wallet address that's created in an om, a sort of an Omni account wallet they have. In other words, they have uh, one wallet. Right, and you know, a wallet can generate as many addresses as you need. So that they created a receive address wallet address, but your account, your coin goes into that Omni account. And then out of that Omni account, they're lending to these margin traders your deposits or what you bought. Then they turn around and tell you, well. Well, you can't withdraw your coin because behind the scenes, without telling you, that coin that you purchased, we put it in our Omni account. That address that you see there doesn't mean you have your own separate wallet from Coinbase on Coinbase itself. It means there's an address there where your deposit could be seen or found. And then they put it up on the ledger, which is Coinbase, you know, that, that their front end. Saying you have two Bitcoin, but that Bitcoin's in an Omni account, and they're lending that out. And then when you go, well, let me withdraw my Bitcoin that I bought today. Well, you can't withdraw it. Why? Because we don't have it, because we lent it out to a margin trader already. Reapplication. And what's going to happen if this, this is, this is why now they can't get this out of the bear cycle. Because, God forbid, if this market shoots up really high, all those shorts out there, that those people are going to be wrecked. And more than likely, what they lent out, which is your coin that's in their Omni, that their uh, Bitcoin Omni account, their, their hot wallet or their cold wallet or whatever they're lending it out from, it's not going to have the coin in it. It's impossible. If, if, if this price goes up, these shorters will get wrecked and they can't pay back that coin.
now, now they sold you, they lent your coin that they're holding on for 10 days, 30 days, a week, or whatever, on whatever margin contract they take out. And who, who knows how long they have these margin accounts? You got to look at the, at the time frames. And then lo and behold, you're going to see your coin. You can't get it in 30 days because it's on a 30 day um, margin account contract or a week or 10 days or three days. You know, these margin accounts, who's to say, you know, what time frames they are. And then all of a sudden they see that your coin's going to be in circulation uh, with, for, with, the, with the guy who's trading on margin for 30 days. So then they turn around and tell you, well, you're not going to get delivery for 30 days of your coin or 10 days or three days. Whatever they lent them out on, on the rehabilitation. They have to get those coins from someplace. If you look at the number of margin contracts and the amounts, if I deposit 10 coin, that means I could borrow I could borrow 70. Where are they getting 70 coin from? Look at the huge amount of margin contracts you have there. There's no way that these guys have the amount of coin to even meet those margin contracts if they're trading on, contr on contracts and derivatives. It's, it's impossible. It's impossible. The system is rigged. It's rigged. You go and look at the, uh, the, the shorts, people that are shorting, which means they're borrowing the coin and dumping. You go look at the graph, it's sky high some of the time. Where are they getting their coin for the margin contracts? Where are the exchanges getting their coin? I can tell you, you're going out and buying that coin. Coinbase holds it for a while. They don't tell you why. They give you some cockamamie story. Even Litecoin. They're lending it out to these margin traders. They're dumping it. And they're telling you to wait three days for your coin when the margin trader comes back in and pays them back the coin that he borrowed. That's what's happening. In other words, the margin trading is putting huge, you could tell, it, well, for a whole year we've been going down because the shorts, the market, it's exploded with margin trading. <laughs> That's obvious, you could see it from last December. Where are they getting this coin from? If your deposit required deposit one coin Bitcoin to borrow seven, and then you dump it immediately on the market, and you have to buy those seven back, where are the exchanges getting no seven coin to lend to the the margin contract holder? They're not buying them on the market. Of course, they know the price is coming up. You're buying it on the market. They're taking your coin that you bought, lending it from their own account to these to these margin traders. Then they turn around and tell you, well, you have to wait 7, 10, 20 days to get your coin back. Because first, we got to look and see which margin uh, 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 trader that we gave him to and the terms and conditions of his borrowing the coin. And we're going to see when the coin is going to come back. Three days? Why exactly three days? How do you know it's going to take three days? How come some people have a different time frame for the same problem? And other people have uh, 30 days. That's what it is. You've got margin contracts we hold for different amounts of time as you contract them. So when they're telling you you're getting your Litecoin in three days, that means... Your Litecoin that you bought has been lent out to somebody who has it on short-term three days. If they tell you that your Bitcoins, you'll get it in 10 days, your Bitcoin that you purchased has been lent out to a margin trader for ten on a 10-day contract. Then you go to somebody who has it for 30 days or 90 days. These are, these are um, margin trading contract times. There you go. These guys are... Using your coin that you purchased, uh, that's why they thats why they don't give you the keys. Because your coin isn't where they say it is. Oh yeah, on the ledger, on their front system, on their ledger book, says you have two Bitcoin, but you try to withdraw that Bitcoin, you can't, because it's someplace else. 
This is a case closed. These guys have gotten too greedy. You know how much interest they're probably? You're, you're talking if you deposit one Bitcoin, you borrow on seven, then you have to get back those seven coins. And they're charging a the fee for all them transactions. So that's how reapplication fits in here. You deposit one coin in the margin account, they lend you seven. One coin turns into seven, that's reapplication. You go and dump those coins on the market, you cause this dump over here. Now you got a problem. If you dump <coughs> those coins, you want to buy them back even cheaper, so it keeps going down. The people that are buying the coin, uh, 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 have it uh, transferred to a, a wallet address that's probably not even really an uh, individual wallet address. It's probably Coinbase's Omni account. An Omni account is where everything passes through the Omni wallet. Margin trader comes in. Hey, hey I like to uh, borrow uh, seven coins because I want to, you know, do a margin contract. Fine. What are the conditions of the margin uh, account uh, trade that you want? Well, I want a short term. I want to try three days. In three days, you'll pay us back the coin. Okay, they take the coin that you purchased out of the Omni account, lend it to the margin trader. He gives them one. Seven goes out. This is why VicSquare is telling you that they'll hold a tenth of the coin that they say they have. They actually have a tenth because they lend it out direct. This is, see, this, they didn't explain it in detail. They lend it out to this margin trader. He dumps it immediately on the market, brings the price down, pisses everybody off. Now he's in the quandary, well, uh, I have to buy it back cheaper. It might be a little greedy, he might have an extra two or three coin laying around. And dumps it a little bit more, buys it back, gives it back to them. And then Coinbase goes, oh, by the way, uh, the terms of the margin trading contract are over. Well, here's your coin. They use your coin for their purpose. They're not supposed to be using your assets for that. That's your assets. That's why I say, pull them out. It's the best thing you do. You pull out the coin off the exchange. They can't rehypothecate it. They can't lend it out. They can't make their margin contracts. They can't make their margin contracts. They can't, the margin guys aren't going to be dumping on the, on the exchange, are they, as soon as they get the coin. Pull your coin off. This is why it is failure to deliver. Your coins, even though they're posted to their ledger, their front end, which is not the blockchain. Repeat, not the blockchain. All right? Even though it shows a, 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 an address that's not an individual wallet address. If you know how to use a wallet, a crypto wallet, a wallet can generate as many addresses as you like for each every individual transaction. It goes into an Omni wallet. Then they turn around. The margin trader comes in. They take your coin that you just purchased, which is now in the Omni wallet. They lend it out. One for seven. They receive a deposit. They probably lend out seven to ten coins to the person who deposits one coin. That person comes in and dumps on the market. That's why you see the margin trading. The shorts have gone crazy. After they they dump it on on uh, the market, they have X amount of time to pay it back. That time X, whatever it is, 3, 10, or 30 days, Coinbase turns around and tells you, you can't move your coin X amount of days, 3, 10, 30 days. You see how it coincides? This is what's going on. When he says reapplication, that's what it's from. Margin trading. You see, to meet their margin trading demand, if you pull out, if you buy the coin and you demand that they deliver it immediately to you and pull it and put it on your, your own wallet, they can't lend it out. You see? So the more so it goes to show you this market is is actually being manipulated down from the margin traders. And they know this, but they don't want to let go of that money. 
The exchanges know this. I'm telling you, the exchanges know this. You buy your coin, as soon as it hits our army account, we're lending it out on, under some kind of contract. It might be batched into a contract. It, you, you, it might be hundreds of people. You buy one, you buy 10, you buy 30. They lend out 100. You're all batched in, all the people who purchased the coin, you're all batched in. And then they turn around and, and calculate, we lent these five people's coins, this guy has this amount, this guy has this amount, this guy who purchased yesterday, tell them that they'll, they won't be getting delivery for their coin. What's the contract for 10 days? Tell them they can't pull their coin out of the uh, coin base for 10 days. Why? Because the margin contract is for 10 days. Their coin has been lent out. It's been rehypothecated. That's why the coin that they're lending to these margin traders is being taken from the people who purchased them and hold them on Coinbase. Remove your coin from Coinbase. Remove them. It'll have two effects. You won't see these large. The price will actually go up. Remove your coin. These guys are manipulating the price, controlling it because of the keep up with their margin trade. Actually, the margin trading is, is, is causing the price to be stagnant and constantly going down. And these exchanges know it. They're not supposed to be lending out their client's coin. It's not their property. That's why you guys aren't getting it delivered. They're lending it out. I've seen this. This is a very simple operation. I've seen this done with stock. I was in stock long. These guys are using this as their personal piggy bank. All right, let me post it.